going on, everyone? Welcome back to AWS On Air. My name is Aaron Hunter, a technical trainer with the AWS Training Certification Team. And today we're going to talk about Amazon Bedrock. But first, we have my good friend, Kyle. Hello, I'm Kyle Dickinson, your neighborhood friendly senior security solution architect that focuses on threat detection and incident response. I'm going to time you, Kyle, and I'm going to see if you can make that shorter and faster every single time as we go throughout the day. <laughs> Challenge accepted. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Today, like I mentioned, we're going to talk about Amazon Bedrock, and we have one of our good friends here to break us into the discussion. Hello. Hey. Nice to meet you guys. Yeah. Nice to meet nice you to too. Nice to meet you too. And this has been a topic that is exploding. This, this, yes. this topic is huge, and I'm very excited to be talking about this here today with you um, about Amazon Bedrock. Now, first, can you just tell us what is Amazon Bedrock? Wait, hold on, but first, can you oh, just tell us what's your name fine. and what yeah, you yeah. do here? <laughs> awesome, awesome. Um, so I am uh, Shri Ilaprolu, a senior manager with the machine learning team at AWS. Uh, so I lead a team of scientists and engineers that work with customers, help them understand the value of generative AI and machine learning in general, take advantage of that to transform their businesses. So that's what we do. Now, getting back to your question, Kyle, what is generative AI, right? Yeah. So this, in my view, is one of the most exciting spaces for machine learning. And as the name implies, the idea here is that you're able to generate net new content that didn't exist before using machine learning. So if you look back in the traditional machine learning way, you take a bunch of data, let's say sales records from the past, okay. you train a model, you generate future predictions for sales using that model. You can do lots of interesting things with machine learning, absolutely transformative. With generative AI, you're actually able to generate net new content, and this content could be text, could be images, could be video, could be audio, right, so you name it. So it opens up a huge area for customers to innovate, pretty much reimagine every business application, transform business models in a exciting way. So you're going to do a bedrock demo for us later on. I will, could, I'm, yeah. I'm very is, excited is, for that. Is the demo going to be created using generative AI? Yes. Oh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. no. We're all doomed. To a, de to a degree, <laughs> okay. right? So to a degree. <laughs> so the way we expect generative AI to transform customers, right? So where they're able to, there are lots of applications for generative AI. Uh, as I mentioned, you can generate text, right? So imagine being able to generate summaries of reports yes. so that you don't need to have humans sit and read one by one by one, but rather throw a bunch of data, get a summarized version of it. Or generate an intelligent Q&A chatbot. Okay. That is keeping context in mind and being able to respond as a human would respond. Yeah. Right? Have real conversations yep. almost. Yeah. yeah or generate new content for marketing campaigns or any sort of images and video that you want to generate. So kind of plug in an idea and yeah. say, I need to do this topic or I need to do this thing, give me some output. Right. So right. very very similar to what like how ChatGPT has disrupted exactly. the world. Yeah. Yeah. So as, as you guys know, six months ago when ChatGPT came on the scene, it opened the eyes of what generative AI could really transform yeah. and do for businesses. And so, that was using GPT-3, That's correct. and now we have GPT-4. Four. Yeah. It's getting, models are yeah. getting more and more powerful. So, With trillions of data sets and data yeah. points, yeah. Yeah, so going back to what's powering generative AI, right, so the underlying concept is that there is a foundation model, okay. which is nothing but a model, a machine learning model that is trained on vast amount of data, and I'm talking internet scale data so that the intelligence and the knowledge of that model is extensive. So it is able to handle any questions that are coming at it intelligently. Any questions. Be, any questions over okay. time, right? So, so that's the foundation, which is the foundation model. Okay, it makes me and think of that one movie. Uh, what's the answer to the life, universe, and everything? Do you know the answer to that one? Pretty much, not, not yet. 40, but, 42. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. Uh, yeah. 75? Yeah. <laughs> so you mentioned that you yeah. yourself, you manage a team of scientists. Does that require you know, customers that want to use Bedrock to have their own scientists to be able to utilize these types of new technologies that we're providing from Amazon? Yeah. So we realize that generative AI is, while it is super exciting, it's not the easiest of technologies for many customers. So in the, in the typical way that AWS approaches things, which is to take a really powerful capability and try to democratize it for as many customers as we can, and that's the same exact approach that we're taking with Bedrock. So Bedrock is a cloud-based service for generative AI where customers can come in, 
build applications, build fine-tune existing foundation models, and start generating new applications on top of it very, very quickly. Great. We announced this uh, last month, actually in April, uh, and then earlier this month, we started a limited preview where customers can now start getting their hands on and start playing with it, start building applications on it. And yeah. so if a customer wants to participate in this limited preview, how could they go about approaching that subject with their account team? Yeah, so they would have, uh, they would talk to the account team, talk about their interest, what uh, what use cases are they planning to solve, and work with the account team to get them into the limited preview. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah. And so we talked about some of the problem statements, some of the use cases. Right. Uh, we also talked about ChatGPT and how that got launched six months ago. Can you talk a little bit about, a little bit about how Amazon Bedrock is built? Yeah. Yeah. So there are significant differences compared to how other applications work versus how Bedrock approaches things. So number one, we want to provide flexibility in the foundation models for customers. We know that a single foundation model is not going to be the answer for every single customer need. So we provide selection of foundation models, both from Amazon, called Amazon Titan, as well as from our third party partners, Anthropic Stability, as well as AI21 Labs, so that customers have a choice of foundation models within the Bedrock service. Okay. So okay. a customer, so that's one, choice and flexibility. Second, everything is enterprise security, right, baked in. So a customer bringing their data to be able to fine tune, it is never leaving their control. They have full control of the data. The data that they're bringing in is never used to train the underlying foundation model. It remains in their control entirely. Now, where do they get the data from? Do they put that in like an Amazon S3 bucket yeah. or put it in Bedrock directly? So good news, many customers already have that data on AWS in some form or fashion, right? <laughs> so whether it's storage, databases, yeah. and so on. But to answer your question, they can literally put it into an S3 bucket, okay. point Bedrock service to it, and fine tune a model. In the same region? In the same region, okay, got right? It. So it never leaves the VPC in that regard. Yeah, got Virtual it. private cloud. So using like some kind of VPC endpoint to be yep. able to like privately connection, okay. That's correct. Cool. Uh, you know, I don't know about you, Aaron, I love hearing about this, but I really, really want to see it. We talked about Bedrock creating its own demo, so <laughs> let's see that. Yeah. Yeah, so, so what I have here is, so let me explain what I have, uh, which is a simple UI that we literally spun up over the last day. Okay. What it does is expose few capabilities within the Bedrock service. Okay. The UI is talking to an API okay. of the Bedrock service. Okay. And when a call goes to the API, it's actually triggering one of the foundation models, in this case a Titan model, yes. in the background. So as I'm typing in a prompt, that prompt is going through the Bedrock service into a foundation model, and an inference result is coming back through the UI. Got it. So in this case, we're, we're going to touch on three different areas, capabilities of Bedrock. The first I mentioned is a Q&A, right? So a lot of customers, especially if you're used to or have played with ChatGPT, ask a question, get a response back that's based on evidence, based on history, yeah. right? So historical data. So very similar. So let's say, um, is cloud computing useful? So I'm just going to ask Ooh, a question. That's, good. that's right? a very political. <laughs> that's a political question. I know. Uh, <laughs> Do it live here. Yeah, yeah. Our um, good job, Amazon Bedrock. You said yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What is uh, what is AWS? Right. So, who are your favorite yeah. AWS on-air hosts? Yeah. <laughs> I don't sure. know if it'll. Know, I don't know if it'll know that. I'm internationally known. Okay. Well, let's see if it knows. And if it doesn't yeah. know it, then let's see if it can tell us how to use an Amazon or how to upload data to an Amazon S3 bucket. What is generative AI? What is so right? So you're you're starting to see answers come back. These are coming off of the foundation model. Now I didn't touch on one area where customers have the ability to fine tune one of the foundation models. So if you have specific data that you have that you want to bring in for your domain, your business, you can take from a base foundation model, bring that data into S3. Okay train a pre or, or fine tune an existing foundation model and that ends up in your endpoint so you can start using so now you're incorporating yeah. your domain or business insights on top of the foundation model I, I imagine you could probably integrate this with other Amazon services or AWS Absolutely. services like recognition for like facial de detection uh, maybe even like transcribe or yeah. like medical documents and records for some like 
uh, discoverability between the, the way that we can help treat people as well. Right. Yeah, so that, that's very powerful. So it is in the cloud, completely integrable, right? Okay. So you can integrate with the storage systems, the compute systems, the other AI services, yeah. so that you can start building a very comprehensive, holistic, cool solution that sits in the cloud, runs in the cloud, never leaves, never has to leave the cloud. Does it know who Kyle is? I don't know if it can answer that quite <laughs> yet. Right? What, so what, would say, what would it say if it doesn't know the answer? Yeah. I want to put it to the test a little sure. bit here. Who is a Kyle? Yeah, who is Kyle Dickinson? This, guy. this that so guy. Let's see. Who is Kyle Dickinson? Oh, it's, we're going to find out right now. Are you really famous, Kyle? I don't know. <laughs> Does Amazon bed rock no? No, nope. uh, I guess there's. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm a professional basketball player, apparently. Uh, you're, yeah. you're, you're almost tall enough. More of like a football stature. <laughs> <laughs> so let's uh, let's take a look at a second area, which is uh, summarization. I mentioned earlier, you can take a large corpus of data. Okay. Have it pointed at bedrock, and bedrock can summarize it into one of the using one of the foundation models, summarize and give it more into give it give it back in a consumable manner. Yeah. Right. So. I'm going to go to Wikipedia, just pick some content. Um, so let me. And while you're doing that, um, yeah. I'll just kind of talk about, even though it didn't recognize you, Kyle, I'm sure we could probably train the foundational model to be more specific to you as Kyle. Yeah. Instead of like Kyle Dickinson, the football player, which I don't think you care about. I care about that, Kyle. But I'm, I'm more of a hockey fan myself. Are you? Yeah. OK. All, All right. right, cool. So what I just did is copy a bunch of content from Wikipedia about what is artificial intelligence, yes. right? So I'm just going to go ahead and let it try. In this case, it's actually trying to shrink it down, summarize in a consumable format. So as you can see at the bottom, this is the original content. The version at the top is the summarized version. And there is an explanation here that you can start drilling into. Oh, what wow. it's now showing is how did it arrive at that summarization? The full breakdown. So, this yeah. is like breakdown. taking TLDR to a whole new it's level. A, it's a recursive <laughs> process of summarization where it starts shrinking down and then start applying recursively so that you arrive at a, at a summarized version of the content. Wow. And so you can, you can pretty much imagine the possibilities with taking large corpuses of data, right, so into documents, meeting notes, you name it. Yeah. It can all be summarized in a consumable format. I need this for my report that I have to write next week. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> And the last one I have here is a translation use case. Uh, in this case, let me just go with the same text that I copied, uh, and I'm going to let it translate into Spanish. So, it, so here, what I'm doing is not only am I translating from one language to a different language, but I'm also infusing with the context, right? The, with the tone, with whatever it is that I want it to be able to do for me. So. Yes, you can translate using other services. In this case, it's actually infusing a little bit more about the tone in which I want the original content and bringing that same So almost into like the a sentiment there. Exactly, okay. the sentiment as well as yeah. the tone and the approach that I want. It's if it's converting. positive, negative, Pass, neutral. Passive, yeah. active. So, can it detect a question within a statement? It can. Okay, right, so without a can. question mark. Yeah. Okay, so, wow. Um, the. Yeah, so the, the, like I said, the end possibilities are endless. You can just go, keep iterating. You can chain these capabilities, right? So now you can start with the summarization yes. and then feed that into generating net new and then have your Q&A bots running off of it, right? So the possibilities are endless. So we are entering a really exciting space here where we imagine every business is going to transform and get transformed using generative AI going forward. And it, Bedrock it, is going to be the foundation it's pretty for a powerful. lot of our customers. Yeah. yeah, I imagine a lot of customers take, are, gonna, are going to take advantage of this. Right. I can see a lot of um, WWPS, so public sector yep. customers, leveraging this for their information. Mm -hmm. um, we have the modular data center, so that yep. way they can load it offline. That's a good question, actually, for you. Will this work in an offline or disconnected mode? Currently, it is cloud-centric because okay. remember the foundation models need to be quite yes. extensive and large, and, it's, and therefore it's powered the by uh, AWS Silicon and yes. also NVIDIA GPUs, right? Yes. That's the other thing that we didn't touch on earlier, which is running these models using AWS infrastructure, especially our custom silicon, Inferentia and Tranium, allows you to reduce your cost of operations in production, right? So. Running on a off-the-shelf commodity hardware versus leveraging Inferentia and Tranium 
you're, you're looking at a roughly 50% price performance benefit. Yeah. That is significant for customers operating in, in production at scale. So that price point is also really attractive when you're yeah. doing it in AWS. Absolutely. Yeah. Could you imagine just shipping thousands of GPUs somewhere? <laughs> no, I, I couldn't imagine that. But now we have the power just to like launch it directly in Amazon Bedrock, take yeah. advantage of the AWS Silicon and NVIDIA GPUs right. directly without having to go somewhere or ship product anywhere, so we're saving cost. Plus, because it has AWS Silicon and NVIDIA GPUs, it's, it sounds like it's really good for the best price performance, yeah, too. Price performance yeah. is awesome. Um, and, and it's the simplicity of it, right? Yes. So we approach it th things in a way that there are customers that are going to be training their own foundation models. We expect that to be limited in number. But vast majority of our customers are going to be fine tuning for their business needs, as well as leveraging the existing foundation models to build applications. Yeah. So, the, so Bedrock allows you to cater to all of those capabilities. Fine tuning, building applications on top, as well as capabilities from SageMaker allows you to build net new foundation models if you want to build from scratch. I was going to say, but, any customers who are currently using Amazon SageMaker, they probably have language models and foundation models that they've built out yep. and maybe trained and they can, they can leverage the data that's outputted from those models and then say, hey, Amazon Bedrock, we have this like data lake of right. information. Can we tap into it? And Amazon Bedrock's going to be like, absolutely, let's yep. do it, right? Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, so we have about a minute and a half, 30 seconds left. Okay. It's a limited, uh, a limited, it's a limited preview. Limited preview. Yep. Customers can, can contact their account, account manager, teams. but where do they go to find out more about it? It's, uh, if you just Google aws.amazon.com slash generative AI, there's all kinds of information available yes. for customers to get started. Okay. Uh, and then there's links into getting more details into Amazon Bedrock, as well as learning more about Amazon Titan, which are our first party foundation models to help customers uh, from Amazon itself. Yep, I, uh, did it, I did it right now. I searched okay. it on the internet, I just typed AWS Gen AI, and it pulls up aws.amazon.com forward slash generative dash AI, where you can say, innovate faster to reinvent customer experiences and applications. I literally did it right now. So it's that easy to find out more information about it, and you can find out all about the flexibility, secure customization, all the different things here. And I'm, I'm literally just reading the page. Go find out more information, everyone. Search it on your favorite internet search engine. Learn more about Amazon Bedrock, AWS Training, and AWS tra Training. Trainium. 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 I work for the training and certification <laughs> team. <It's> just, <laughs> sorry. Now you're for the Trainium and certification uh, team. Yo, the Trainium and generative AI team now. <laughs> With AWS Inferentia, Amazon Code Whisper, but specifically Amazon Bedrock. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you yeah, guys. Really